Hey, what's up? Happy New Year, everyone. So I want to talk about this effect in the command palette called the Motion Effect Editor. I always drag it on the left side of my source monitor here. That's I don't use it as a keyboard shortcut. Now, this is not to be confused with if you go to Tools Motion Effect Editor, which if I go into Effect Mode, you can do a lot of uh, different parameters and things like that. What I'm talking about here is something where I have a clip in the source monitor, and I hit this Motion Effect Editor, and it's going to bring up this window right here. So a little less options as far as keyframing so why would I use this clip right here for the most part I would use something where I had a piece here where I'm working on very very limited b-roll okay so in some cases like we didn't have room to make another shot so we so this shot here it was one second and 16 frames but we needed it to fill a hole of 123 so the way you would do that is to go in here and in this motion effect editor, you can just hit this button fit to fill it's going to automatically slow motion this clip to the amount that you have marked on an in and out on your timeline. So this fit to fill, this will slow-mo a clip. Instead of guessing, right, how long it would take to fill this 219 on the source side, on the record side, it was 414. So I can just hit this clip, motion effect editor, fit to fill, it's gonna tell you that 58% slow-mo you only need a 59 percent slow-mo so sometimes think about this you don't want to necessarily want to slow-mo clips more than they needed to because this is literally the only reason i'm slow-moing the clip is to fit it to fill um it's not a desired effect it's not a intentional slow-mo effect for uh you know purposes or effect it's really to literally fill the hole that i'm trying to uh cover here and one thing I'll say right here, for the most case, um, I'm working with broadcast television footage. I'm always using interpolated fields. Notice if you have issues where fields are bouncing and things like that, you might want to change this. I'm not going to get into this in this video, but for the almost 99% of every time I've ever used this, I use this interpolated field. So I'll try to show you one clip with this uh, strobe motion effect, which is I wouldn't use it very often. But if I strobe motion, let's say, I don't know, every five frames. And what happened here in the source side, I marked an in and out. So I only have three seconds here that it's going to create a new clip because otherwise it's going to render and take a, take a lot of time if you were to do the whole thing. So three seconds, probably hard to tell if you don't have a lot of movement in the clip. But I don't know, it's giving sort of a stuttery, jittery type of look, right? It's 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 slow mowing it, but it's only actually moving, it's almost removing two frames at a time. So it, it's a unique look. You might want to use it in true crime uh, reenactment type footage, right? Looking back at something like that, it can give you some unique looks using that strobe motion. So the key is to use this effect is to first, from uh, the command palette, drag it onto your source side. And then anything you have in the source monitor, mark it in and out slow-mo it whatever you want you can slow-mo 25 percent you can use the fit to fill right if you have an in and out marked on your record side you could have strobe motion on or off or and like i said with the fields before i would always use interpolated field so the other thing to think about a one way to use this in an interesting way is if you have a graphic made from after effects so i have this graphic right here that came from a template and it's 16 seconds so there's no way i'm going to have a graphic up for 16 seconds but at the same time it's much quicker for me to just render that full template graphic out in after effects import it into avid and adjust the speed in avid okay and the way i would do that is using this motion effect editor i wouldn't go into tools effects motion and, and use keyframes in that case i probably would just let's start something here let's say i wanted to get to right this is the moment and then it reveals the name so this is seven seconds so one way i could do this now is to fit to fill instead of being seven seconds I could make this, let's talk about frames here, I could make this 35 frames, right? A second and five frames. And it's telling me it's going to be 660% uh, percent speed. And now if I create and render, let me put this clip at the end here, right? Wow. So it made that speed ramp so much, but now I want to go normal, right? I want it to get back to normal speed. So what I can do is just match frame in, mark my in there, and... I could just clip it on. I could slow mo it. I could do whatever I want there. And now I have a sort of, I have a speed ramp in a sense. 
pretty cool, right? Instead of trying to manipulate it in After Effects and guess what the exact time it was, it's much easier to do what I just showed you in Avid. And I do this a lot of times with template graphics. Just match frame in. If I want this end to be quicker, just keep this the same size, whatever it was, 660%. And now I'm right, right because I marched, marked my in. And now in theory... You know, you can't really tell there because there wasn't enough movement there. But in theory, I sped up the whole end of it, right? So different ways to talk about this awesome, awesome tool called the Motion Effect Editor from the Command Palette. And again, much different than always going into this Motion Effect Editor. I use this for custom speed ramps. I have a video on speed ramps that actually has a bin that gives you some of my favorite speed ramps. Um, it works on any version of Avid. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the speed ramp video that I have. So with the new year upon us, instead of dry January, I'm going to have a very wet January. And what am I going to drink this January? I just got Something I was very, very excited about. A 12-pack from Brooklyn Brewery called IPA for All. I actually really like mixing up my IPAs when I'm in my binge drinking sessions rather than just drinking the same one over and over again. And I really like when these breweries are mixing, sort of making 12-packs, 15-packs with all different types already. So I don't have to, you know, it just sort of makes it easier. Some of these are not session IPAs, which will certainly lead to a, a larger hangover the next day. But I really hope 2022 is a great year for all the subscribers, for the channel, and for the whole world, really, that this stupid virus can just leave us and we can go back to drinking in person without worrying about mass variants and, and we can just share the hops like these four people are doing in this Brooklyn Brewery uh, beautiful website there. So I look forward to a new year of avid tips and tricks. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.